What's up guys? Welcome to another video. My name's Nelson. I'm a four-time USA memory champion and today we're gonna play a little Nintendo 64. Super Mario 64 to be exact. One of my favorite games of all time. It just reminds me of my younger years. Am I dating myself? Probably, whatever. Um, but we're gonna be using this fantastically beautiful controller. God, I love this thing. What are we doing inside of Super Mario 64? Well, here's the plan. I've been working on this project since about March earlier this year. Had a lot of time on my hands. I'm sure you know why. And I've been working on this big memory project. It's almost done. I'm almost ready to perform it. I just have a thousand more digits to memorize for this thing. And I gotta say, I've used up quite a lot of my memory palaces and I'm running dry. So I need a new one. And I figured why not use something that's fun, different, that means something to me, Super Mario 64. So I think this will be interesting for you guys to see how I take a large amount of data and come up with a memory palace on the fly as I go and memorize all that information. I haven't seen the thousand digits yet, so I'm gonna learn them here in this video while you watch. Now, if that wasn't enough, let's add a little element of challenge here. I was thinking maybe I could try to beat the game at the same time. Give myself about an hour to beat the whole game and memorize all 1000 digits inside of Super Mario 64. Now, I know some people can beat this game in just minutes with zero stars, one star, but I'm gonna try to beat it with 16 star, which is kind of the, the default speed running amount of stars people go for. My personal best, it's not very good. It's been around 30 minutes. So I think 30 minutes plus stopping and going, memorizing stuff, memorizing a thousand digits. I think pushing for an hour would be a good challenge. So let's get into it. All right, one thing I realized that maybe a lot of you viewers don't know about is what is a memory palace? So I've actually done a bunch of videos. I'll link to one up here just so you have that. But if you search my channel, you'll find tons of videos explaining or using a memory palace. But in short, just so we have it here in this video, a memory palace is basically a place that you use. Typically it's some place that you know very well, like your house or the school you went to growing up or your significant others, apartment, whatever, and you place images for things that you're memorizing along a path through that space. The idea being that when you wanna recall that information, all you have to do is think back on that place, go through it, traverse it through your mind, and pick up the images for what you memorized in the place. So what I'll be doing in this video is, instead of using a real place that I'm imagining, I'll be using a fictional place that exists within this Nintendo 64 video game world, which is, Totally reasonable. I know the place very well. I spent my childhood playing the game for hours, so it's familiar to me. It's a 3D space, so why not? And what I'll be doing is turning the numbers that I need to memorize into pictures, we'll talk about that later, and placing them along paths through this map of the Super Mario 64 world. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so I think the first thing I need to do is kind of map out what I'm gonna do. So I have a thousand digits and I basically need, the, the, way, the way I have these numbers separated is basically every five digits is one image for me. The first three are a person and the last three are an object or a person sometimes. So that middle digit actually overlaps. And I do that on purpose because in the case that I forget maybe either the first part or the last part. If I can get that middle digit, then it sometimes helps me remember one or the other. So a thousand digits, every five digits is one image. That means I need 200 locations. I figured while I'm beating the game, kind of as I go, I'm gonna try to break up the path that I take into segments of 10 locations. So I need 20 sets of 10 locations and each of those 10 locations will store 50 digits. So what'll be nice is I could use parts of the castle, maybe even certain levels as I move through them. That way they're nicely contained in certain pockets of the castle and the game itself. So let's get into the game. Let me kind of, before I even start trying to beat the game, uh, just map it out first. We're not gonna start the timer yet. Okay, so I think what makes the most sense is to model my 
pathway, my memory palace route, after the actual path I'm gonna take to beat the game, which I know pretty well. Because remember, the best memory palaces are the ones that you know very well. And the order in which you go through it should make sense too. I don't wanna memorize anything extra. Remember, I'm doing 20 sets of 10 locations each. 10 locations, five digits each, that's 50 digits per area. Times 20, that's the thousand digits. So of my 20 locations, the first will be the outside. You go into the castle, maybe a little bit of the lobby. Then we go to the left, we go into the first kind of level area called the bomb battlefield. Then typically I go to the next available level once you have that first star, which is Womp's Fortress. Then I need a couple more stars. I go to Cold Cold Mountain, the snowy place. And then once I'm there, I'll have enough stars to go to the first Bowser boss. So I'll go to his level. After I beat Bowser, I can go into the basement and that little pathway there through the halls there could be its own memory palace portion as well. Then I go into the lava level. That'll be another one. Then I go into the sands level, Hazy Maze Cave one. Then I go into the water world. Let's start with that, the first 10. That way it's half, it's 500 digits. And maybe I'll just figure it out from there. I don't know, let's see how we go, let's see how we go. It's me, Mario. Okey dokey. All right, longest intro ever. So while this is going, you notice here I have actually all of my numbers ready to go. And beneath them, I have actually all of the images preset. I've gone through and converted all those numbers to images. So actually what I'm just gonna be looking at are the images that I have and memorizing those because I can always translate them back to numbers. For those of you wondering, I have a really complicated system for memorizing numbers. It's quite advanced. Um, you can see it in this video if you wanna learn more. But uh, the point is, is instead of numbers, I see pictures of people and things. It's a lot easier to remember that way. All right, so here we are. Um, and I have my first 10 images that I'm going to put there. And I guess I should just kind of map this out. So I guess where I start, that's the first location right here. Yeah. Then I'm gonna come here to this sign. Then maybe here, that's three, four, whoops. Four will be the bridge. Five will be the door. Yeah, then we can do this right in the doorway, the stairs, the open lobby part, the side stairs, and then entering through into the room that has the next level, the bomb battlefield. Okay, now let's actually memorize these things. All right. Okay, so the first one I have is a friend of mine, Pam. She's climbed with me, and she's got a bunch of freckles on. And so that one is 95889. So I'm going to picture her right here with a bunch of freckles. Okay, next one is the sign that is uh, a geek. So that's 706 and he's got a scuba tank, 695. Okay, so he's by the sign, he's got nerdy glasses on and he's breathing from a scuba apparatus. Then here we have my aunt and she's on a rocket ship, just flying back and forth. <laughs> uh, then on the bridge we have, ah, memory guy, Tony Buzan. For those of you who know, Tony Buzan, um, and he's wearing a Pope hat. And I guess I could just picture him just kind of waving that Pope wave to everybody across this bridge. Next up by the door, we have another memory guy, Chester Santos, um, who is, sorry Chester, he's taking a shit, a big old dump in front of that door and it smells bad. All right. Okay, we'll come in and then maybe on this first little star here, uh, the sun will put my, it's another my, another one of my aunts and she's ringing a bell. Okay, so that's what, 66544. Then up the stairs here we have my, oh, it's a lot of my family. Uh, it's my cousin Marie and she's climbing a ladder, which I guess she's got laid down on the stairs and she's just climbing it. Then in this open area here will be the next one. It's a pumpkin playing the trumpet. Then we have up here on the steps is Scrooge and he's having a seizure on the stairs. Okay, that's not so pleasant. And then finally, a friend of mine, Bonnie, uh, she's smoking a cigar. Okay, cool. So in my head, I'm just gonna quickly think about it. I had a pan with the freckles, my geek friend, a geek, 
uh, scuba diving, my aunt on a rocket ship, Tony Buzan waving like a pope, Chester Chancellor was taking shit. Um, my aunt uh, with a bell, my cousin with the uh, uh, ladder, pumpkin playing trumpet, Scrooge seizure, and Bonnie smoking a cigar. Cool, all right. Okay, we wasted so much time. Let's get a friggin' star. All right, so we've memorized the first 10. Let's memorize the next 10. All right, let's get the star first here. There we go. Nice. All right, so right here, I wanna put the next one right where I am. That's Doc from <laughs> Back to the Future, and he's got a spiky jacket on, like a punk. My other aunt, Francoise, and she's saying ET phone home. All right, and then finally, by where the star was, since this is where I ended up anyways, by this grating is this friend of mine, we call him Red, because he's got red hair, and he's wearing a bro, a man bro, if you remember from Seinfeld. No, bro's no good, too ethnic. The man's ear. Cool. All right, so at this point, you can probably see that this is gonna take some time. I've got tons and tons of images to go through. A lot of them are super personal. They're ones I've curated over the years, thought up by myself, and based on people, family, and characters in my life, both real and fictional, that are important to me. How I came up with that system is kind of beyond the scope of this video. The point of this video is to just show you the process of how I would go about memorizing something so large with a video game memory palace. I'm basically getting the stars I need to in each level and then figuring out where I want to place each of the 10 images in the level. Then place the image or imagine it there, do a quick review and then move on. So at this point I'd basically encoded and placed about 500 digits, which was half of what I needed to and I had about 20 minutes left to beat the game and memorize the other 500 digits. <laughs> So after this, I kind of picked up the pace, tried to get to the final Bowser as quick as possible and beat the game so I could spend the remaining time memorizing what was left. So what I had to do at this point was kind of think of other locations that I didn't use on my path to beat the game, but that I was going to use just to store the digits after the fact. So I thought of different parts of the castle, other levels that I hadn't visited yet, and kind of quickly went and visited them or just kind of mentally visited them and through the last remaining digits in them. Bro, snow eye guy with dulce de leche. Okay, that's it. Time, I'm done. Mm. All right, so just under an hour. Had some frustration with the game, but that's okay, I suck. But yeah, again, the interesting part here was the memory, not the gameplay. Without further ado, let me actually, from memory, try to do all 1,000 digits. This may be tough to watch. I may speed it up or I may cut it a bit and then link to somewhere up here, uh, the full version if you wanna watch me say all 1000 without mistakes, but let's see. All right, so we have, um, let me look at the time right now. Okay, so we have, what do we have? Oh yeah, 95889706953. 365, 340, 9464, 9, 4, 9, 4, 9, Zero five six zero zero one zero one six five five two five six three and then seven five six seven eight. All right, guys, that is it. I am done with this video. I am exhausted. I would have done that at a more leisurely pace, but now I have those thousand digits in this memory palace. I can always go back and review them. And that's the nice thing is like I don't worry too much about getting it perfect. Like I made some mistakes, it's not a big deal because I know that with one more pass, if I just review this one or two more times, it will be there. You saw how good it was already. Just a little more review, that'd be perfect. Um, 
And yeah, you saw how I was able to just take a memory palace on the go as I was actually doing another pet task, which was trying to beat the game. And uh, it wasn't too big a deal. And there was actually a lot of room to spare. I only used small portions of each section. There could have been a lot more use and I could probably store more numbers in there as well. But yeah, I hope that was interesting. I hope that helped you out. Maybe think of ideas for your own memory palaces. Maybe you wanna go in and play this game and come up with your own memory palaces. If you have any suggestions of any other video games you'd like me to create memory palaces out of, please let me know in the description. I'd love to play them. There's a lot of really kind of good content out there. Maybe Minecraft or something? Hmm? Fortnite? What do you think? Let me know. Among Us? Oh, Among Us. I could just forget about whether I'm an imposter or crew member and just go around the map memorizing stuff. How annoying would that be? Everybody would think I'd be suspicious as hell. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I uh, hope you're having a great end of the year. 2020 is almost over. We're almost there. I'll see you guys.